This message will be connected to the demonstration of what I did and I asked mommy and pastors to do with your eyes. The Lord wants to walk on your eyes as you go into the future. Of course, I expect that anybody that has physical impairment in your eyes, at the end of this service, you'll be healed. You'll get your healing. Praise God. Um, in Yoruba culture, there is the understanding in spiritism of people that have what they call Ebe. You know that? A spiritual team as it were on the negative side but you know we have never taught Christians that on the positive side there is a team that works with you we go over some scriptures and we wonder what do they mean when Elisha said they that be with us they are more than they that be with them in Genesis 32 when Jacob saw some people coming he said this is god's company and he named it that place manahim two camps so there are two camps so we are actually the people that have the original spiritual team you are not alone as a child of god but most of us don't walk in partnership and um Team with that spiritual support system. So this is a journey in understanding that we are on. Did you get what I'm saying? I said you should open your Bibles to Second Kings chapter what? Chapter four. Okay. So let's see where this is taking us. And I'm reading from verse one. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying. Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? What do you have in the house? And she said, Listen, thy handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil that's what she called it because that is what it looks like to her you cannot succeed with god better than the way your eyes see things and that's where this message is coming from are you hearing me now don't forget i made the statement that the things i operate in the calling of the called must become a spirit in the life of the believer. Do you understand that? So God will, God will always have men that will do incredible miracles among us, real miracles that shake people to give us a picture that God is alive and God is real. But also to become a spirit in our own lives. Did you hear what I said? So don't waste your journey. Don't do it. In the course of teaching and ministering, I try to teach and limit my teaching to experiences that is available to everybody. But occasionally we have ministrations and situations that you have to step out of that realm into the realm of the calling. Do you understand? But it's to let you understand that God wants to have that spirit in you. So when you see, the Lord showed me this. The Lord showed me this. What we do in church, what we did this morning, it's God's intention that that become a spirit in your life. Do you understand? He didn't say you are going to minister like that. I hope you understand that. But you are going to read life like that. I hope you understand what I said. Praise God. Some of the experience, when I say it, you know, I remember I was, I was saying something in the church I was preaching on Saturday, and the man is looking at me and saying, I said, I looked at the woman in the village, and I saw the eyes of a cat. 
Now every other person that is there, they look at, the eyes look normal, but I'm seen behind the scene. So I know that woman is not a normal woman, even though amongst people they think she's normal. But she's not normal. You understand? Last Wednesday, as I was teaching at the headquarters, I saw a lady. And what I saw in the spirit was not okay. And then I made a statement just some seconds after I saw that. And that lady, that lady, that lady got so angry, furious, packed that thing. And lady that sat beside me, she smiled. Now, because I didn't have a time anyway. I'm just um, minding my business. But you understand that? Do you understand this? That's why we started where we started. Bible said the things that Jesus began to do and to teach. You understand? Huh? So, Second Kings chapter 4, now, he said, Thy handmaid has not anything else save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels borrow not a few. Now let's pick, let's put our finger there and compare this particular story to another one in Mark chapter 6. Put your finger there and you understand the same thing is what I'm dealing with. You will not make a friend an enemy. And you will not make an enemy a friend. You understand that? You will not put your children in custody of enemies. Amen. That supernatural awareness which is part of the toolkit of the effective believer. Say effective. Yes. Effective believer. Yeah. You will have it function. Now look at Mark chapter 6 and then read from verse 30 um 35 and when the day was now fast spent his disciples came to him and said this is a desert place and now the time is far past send them away that they may go into the country round about and to the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat look at that and he said unto them Give ye them to it. And they said, Shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to it? He said unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. Now, the last phrase, Go and see. Say, I will go and see from now. Oh, you didn't hear me. Say, I will go and see. Not everybody that looks sees. In fact, when I was starting out in ministry years ago, this was one of the passages that Lord gave me in John chapter 5. The, the John chapter 5 version, he said, read it very well. And note this, in the course of your ministry, you must understand the things that you will need money to do and the things that I will do. I hope you understand. Money will not be and I learned not to worry about the things that I can't do. I just, the ones that money will do, he will supply the money. The ones that he will do, he, will, he, he has never failed to do his own part. Now look at what he said here. Go and see. And then they went. If you read the rest of the story, I'm sure that all of them saw that boy with five loaves and two small fishes. But to them, it was nothing. Similar to what that woman said in 2 Kings chapter 4. Is that okay? It is that that God wants you to carry from this service. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was this same problem that caused them to miss the promised land. If you look back now, because you must put these scriptures together. They said, we saw. Everybody say, we saw. Uh -huh. we saw the giants there did God show them the giants who showed them very key what do you see is a common phrase in the bible but we didn't 
think of it the way that God is saying it to us today. Because what you see is how you are. And God wants to change how you are to see life exactly how God sees it. What you call a problem, God call it an opportunity. Why? Because it's God. What you call a nobody, God call it my weapon. So they said, give them to it. He said, give them. He said, what are you, even if you buy five, one year's salary worth of bread, it's not enough. I said, go and see. And so they went and eventually Andrew, and Andrew had a gift that we have not respected. The gift I'm talking about, the gift of eyes. The gift of eyes. Eyes that see. Eyes that see correctly. Now, you know it was Andrew that brought Peter to Jesus. And he saw this five, this boy with five loaves and two small fishes. And said, okay. And he came. Boy. Now watch where he brought the boy from. When he saw the boy, he saw. Pastor said, well, this is all that we have, so let's bring it. And he began to bring it. And the devil was walking with them all the way. Talking to him. Trying to change that sight. That's what the devil is still doing. To change what God showed you. Or give you what is showing you in that situation. And then he said, when he got to the master, he said, here is a blood with five loaves and two small fishes. What are they among so many? Very similar to 2 Kings chapter 4. Did you hear what I said? Praise God. May God touch you where it matters. Amen. Today. That woman said, this pot of oil. To her, that's all it was. But to Elisha, that is the miracle catalyst. Everybody, everybody, everybody always have something in your possession that can open your tomorrow to God. Everybody. But this is the attack of the devil against it. He said, bring them to me. Just like this woman. Go back to 2 Kings chapter 4 now. Brought it to Elisha verse 3 and he said, go. Borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. Now we have had, we have preached so many things from this passage. I preached a lot of messages from it. But this morning the Lord wants me to talk to you about your eyes. The gift of eyes. The gift of eyes. You know the rest of the story? The woman limited God just like Peter limited God. But we must not limit God. Because what you see is going to determine what you are going to become. What you are going to have. How far you are going to go. Right or wrong. Praise God. Go back to Genesis. I know I didn't complete the story. I just wanted to focus on that part. This thing looked like something to the woman. It looked different to Elijah. To Elijah. What's the difference? Because of the anointing that he carried. In the calling. I've seen God take men that gave up on themselves. And you can't serve God unless God walks upon your eyes. God, life, things will look too hopeless, too impossible, too terrible. 
that you can you talk like disciples talked. And if you continue like that, God, we have to look for somebody else. And like I prayed for the women at the Women Congress, what God planned for you to do, you won't look for another person to do it. Yeah. You must be willing to change. In Genesis chapter 3, turn your Bibles there. Let me try to stay here now. Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, now notice this, he said unto the woman, this is a supernatural communication. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is what? A supernatural communication. And God's plan and God's goal is to work until what is supernatural in the calling becomes the spirit flow in your life. Is that clear? And said, Yea, as God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest you die. Now we leave that one for today. God didn't say touch it or not, don't touch it. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Up underline that phrase, your eyes shall be opened. That is what I'm preaching on this morning. The opening of eyes supernaturally. The opening of eyes supernaturally has two channels. A negative one and a positive one. Listen to this. Every sin every crime every evil proceeds from the negative opening of eyes every great result recovery achievement comes from the positive opening of eyes there is a negative supernatural opening of eyes did you hear what i'm saying huh we have had the painful task of ministering to girls that their own biological father disvergent. Say, ha, yeah. But now, the question is, how did a daughter look sexual to the father? That is a supernatural opening of the eyes. Are you listening to me? When you hear that somebody did something crazy, why did he look like that to him to do it? It was the evil opening of the eyes. And today, every negative opening of your eyes must shut down. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? I pastored a young banker. No, I know I didn't pastor him. He came to visit us. He was working in Ogun State, but he hears me on radio, so he came to Ishobu. And he has a problem. He steals money from the bank. I said, that is a volatile combination. You're a banker that you steal. Now, what made him think that because he has access to the money, he can enter to take it? And the time that he came to Ishobu, we had the problem of generator at A197. And I was raising funds for the, for the generator. And then he told me, he says, I want to give. I said, not you. You are not part of people. You know the problem you have. Because you are going to look for that money wrongly. God brought him to close that negative opening of his eyes. His eyes has opened in a negative way. Are you following what I'm saying? Have you seen somebody that is walking somewhere and his eyes open to what is there that is not part of what is working? From that point on, his journey will be a K-legged journey. And if they don't sack him, he will get in bad trouble. Because the devil had 
gotten involved in his case and opened their eyes. And unless their eyes closed, that evil will not stop occurring. Are you still here? They, they say that a pastor slept with a choir member. Slept. I said, how did it occur? You know, one day one girl came to see us and um, for counseling from Ikiti State or Akondo State. And the, 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 the head of the ministry that she was coming from had been sleeping with her regularly. In fact, when, when she was talking, her mommy said, Ah! We need have my own. You know, the first thing is that when that girl came, she was waiting and waiting for the time that in the church they will send for her to come and see the pastor. Because that's what that man does. So her eyes is open in a negative way, expecting that she never get God the call. So when mommy sat with her and she began to open up, you could see see the damage that that person had done for her she is now looking at every pastor with her eye and that had to be closed in divine healing and forgiveness are you following what i'm saying but what about other girls that see a pastor as a sexual object are you following what i'm saying lester sumer in his teaching years ago said in an assembly, at least 10 women are speculating of having an affair with the pastor. That's a strange number. Praise God. Now, if we apply it here, I'm, who are the 10 women that are applying that are doing that? You say, what? You can only know about yourself. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. One day, two girls came to work in the office because people come to work in the office regularly and then occasionally when i'm meeting with them mommy 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 is there and she was, was, was introduced these two girls so i told mommy i said this girl this one is innocent this other girl is not innocent say what do you see i said there's something about her she's opened to a realm of interacting with men that is not godly I could see it in her eyes. And that's exactly what played out with that girl. I hope you're following what I'm saying. Now, of course, she wasn't planning to sleep with the pastor, but she's looking in a way that the other girl, they are, they are colleagues, but they are not the same. She needs help to close that eye down. That's where the problem of the human race started from. And if you look at what the Bible said in Genesis chapter 3, the next verse, what does it say? After where the devil said, God knows that in this, and the woman, the Bible said the woman, read it. Verse 6 now. And when the woman, what are we talking about now? Now that that tree that God said they shouldn't touch, when she saw, when you see the devil is showing you, evil will happen. To be a safe Christian, you, may be, you must be a blind person and a sighted person. Blind in the sense that what the devil is showing men, you are blind to it. And what God is showing men, you can see it. Did you hear what I said? One of my pastors, a medical doctor, told me, and um, her boss, um, his boss at work, a female, said he would like to see their Jew. And so he booked an appointment for her to come and see me. Now, I've never seen a woman that is in the medical profession dressed like that. All right? And so that morning, I knew there was this appointment coming up. And the Lord said, spend some extra time to pray. 
not just no matter. I pray particularly for that appointment. This one is coming, okay, Lord, whatever it is, help her out of her situation. Pray, took time to pray and everything. And then the woman showed up. She was just like a prostitute. Are you following what I'm saying? And that's a senior medical person. And so she came, sat. Of course, I do counseling in the public, in the auditorium, and all that. I sat down. And um, so I'm talking with her and everything and all that. And I saw what was going on in the spirit. But now because as, after I prayed, the Lord had closed my eyes to what she came to do, to show. When I was talking to who she needed to be and what was wrong with her. When she went back, she told the pastor, he said, your pastor is a true man of God. Meaning that she had done that to others. Are you following what I'm saying? And I warn pastors that you must be careful if a woman is coming to you and throwing a womanness at you. You won't be able to minister to her as a pastor. And that truncates your ministry. Are you following what I'm saying? That there is a way that you must see in order to go where you are supposed to go. What makes a minister to turn the people of God into economic material? The devil has showed him what should not be seen. So that blindness must happen to you. He said, who is as blind as my servant? There must be a divine blindness to what Satan is showing. It could also be like the Numbers chapter 13. When they sent 12 spies to the promised land. And the devil opened their eyes to the power of the enemy. These are the same enemy that God had defeated. So what are they seeing there? We are not able to go into it. Why? They are seeing the wrong things. Are you following what I'm saying? One day after, at the show, I finished, I finished service and I'm sitting down with counseling people. And this time, they, they, a number of our pastors, they just came from medical school that time to Shobo. And after I finished teaching and finished counseling, one of them came, he sat in front of me and said, what do you Come, what do you want to see me for? Say, so I just want to make a comment that um, I watch you the way you sit down ministering to us students. I, I didn't know he was sitting and watching the, my interaction with the student talking and spending time with them, encouraging, counseling, ministering, and all that. And he said, Are you not wasting your time talking to us ordinary students? It never occurred to me. And I said, I'm not talking to students, I'm talking to your future. Something hit him. Now, first thing that occurred to me is that he has to come out of that mindset because if he becomes a pastor, he won't give time to students. Because that's where he sees them. Are you following what I'm saying? And today is one of my most trusted pastors. If I forget something in my house and in my bedroom, I can give him the key to go there. And every time when I get on that subject, I can see the embarrassment on his face. That I wish I never did. No, he had to go through that road so that his eyes can be closed to that. Because that is what the devil is opening his eyes to. That's what has affected some people. He sees people in their physical status. So he gives more attention to somebody that is wealthy and less attention to somebody poor. The same blood of Jesus saved everybody. Are you following what I'm saying? Why you must not be intimidated by the wealthy and the highly placed, you must not despise the lowly and whatever. God is working in everybody's life. And he needs you to see them the way God sees them. Are you following what I'm saying? In fact, one of the things I found out in ministering to people is to find out that some of the most successful, wealthy people that I've ministered to, they have the same kind of, in fact, some worse problem than people that are poor. And nobody believes it. Nobody believes that the wealthy can be crying in the secret. Nobody believes that somebody can be this successful and have this problem in their lives. 
Because that is the way the devil wants you to see that person. Most people around the successful don't see them in any need. They just see them as someone they can take from. Are you following what I'm saying? And they may be dying inside. If you are going to reach out and minister them, God must open your eyes to see them correctly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know God can send you to your boss with a word that meets his need very strongly. But to do that, you have to see him the way God sees him. Praise God. Ministry follows that correct sight. If you don't have that sight, you don't have effective ministry. You will have a lopsided ministry. Are you following what I'm saying? A pastor sees a man that wears a big dress and he changes his, his, his subject to sowing seed. Are you following what I'm saying? Now that is crazy. When God wants to reach out to people and minister to people. So are you still here? That what is supernatural in the calling must become a spirit flow in your own life. That's where we're going. Let's look at some other scriptures here. Second Kings chapter 6. Now you see that Genesis 3 to 3. That is the negative opening that that woman saw based on what the devil is saying. Now you must begin to see based on what God is showing. Did you hear what I'm saying? The kind of sight that caused that woman to move from doubt to faith. To begin to pour oil from a bottle and began to feel vessels, 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 feel vessels. When I started the ministry and I was ministering to students, they just God said, Go to Shubu now. And he was bringing the loud text to them from Ubon they are coming for their clinicers. He brought the pastor to meet with them to grab them and harness them for destiny and ministering to people. It was that sight. I said, begin to point to them. 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 The pastor in Houston today came to church as a primary three student with his older brother. Just tiny thoughts like that. Begin to point to them. Begin to point to them. Begin to point to them. If, if, if you don't see what God sees in the lives of people, you cannot reach them correctly. You cannot help them correctly. 